This videotape is for the purpose of identifying the prime muscles that move the bones and connecting joints involved in the striking of a golf ball with a golf club. To accomplish this, we must involve physics, geometry, engineering, psychology, and physiology, which deals with the process of locomotion of the physical body and appendages. A good golf stance and its alignment require a kinetic balance, the proper angle of address, and the gripping of the golf club. A circular arc around the center of balance of the body establishes the swing plane of the arms and the golf club. The synchronization of the wrists, elbows, shoulders, hips, knees, and ankles are also imperative for a successful golf swing. With this tape, we hope to demonstrate a constant swing plane, a controlled club face, a proper angle of trajectory, and amount of force needed for the distance required. We want to acknowledge the generosity of Dr. Jim Arnold and Dr. Tom Williams for their support and assistance with the graphics of this video. Greetings, golf students. You're here today to try to understand the prime muscles used in the motivation of the various bones and the adjacent joints because they have to coordinate the bones by the movement of the muscles. It bends the joints to put you in a position so that you can strike a ball more efficiently, more accurately, with greater power. Now we're not going to do everything about the whole body. We're going to bring out the prime muscles and the joints that affected the locomotion of the golf swing. The gentleman here is Mike Dunaway. He will be demonstrating the actions that I will be explaining in relation to kinesiology. Kinesiology is a science that deals with the analyzation of muscular motion and locomotion of the human anatomy. Today, we want to have Mike stand in an erect stance. Feet about 12 inches apart at the heels, the, the toes slightly open, which frees up the rotation of the back swing and the fore swing. We stand in that upright stance. Mm -hmm. We use the, the rectus abdominis muscle to cause your head to go toward the ball and your derriere to move back because it's two inch you're balancing your rump to your head. Okay. You've got about, say, seven pounds Mm -hmm. ahead you got that much rope and you balance it out and your balance point is just navel okay we're rolling same time you're ready yeah. go ahead and go well in changing from an upright position to that of the stance which is so important in making the perfect strike of the golf ball it's hard to do it from an upright because you're striking something on the ground when you get your spine inclined about 30 degrees by contracting the rectus abdominis muscle, it brings your head down toward the ball and your dairy air away from the ball. You you'll bend over until your hands are about parallel to the tip ends of your toes, from one toe to the other, you see? Mm -hmm. Now, what you'll do, you'll 
clasp your hands together like you're going to clap them like that and extend it into a, a V position or a triangular position. Now, to get the position that you will need to hold a club with one hand below the other, you flex the left knee, which is done by the right knee. I mean, right knee. By the femur flex of muscle, flexing. And this comes out, which is to keep the left knee in extension, but not rigid, okay? Mm -hmm. That let the, the left hip and I me mean right hip and your right hand lower and your right shoulder. So now it enables you to get through this position very accurately. If you stand square knee, square hip and square shoulder, you'll be banging the club into the ground to try to get it through. You don't have to do that. With this thing we're allowing now from the space between your swing circle center, which is back your neck where the clavicles go right across the seventh cervical. That's the center of oscillation of the golf swing. The center of balance is in the navel area. You see, you could vary an inch and a half an inch above, a half an inch below. It's called the size of your shoulders compared to other people's shoulders and size of your hips sometimes with women. They have wider hips than men. If you have a little belly, you have a little less room too, <laughs> yes. right? Sometimes <laughs> sometime you have to bend over a wee bit more when you're a little bit wide <laughs> from front to the back. <laughs> now, when you're in this position, that's called a stance. Now, after you have the stance, there's another thing you have to do. Have your stance aligned up to the point to which you wish to be at, you know. Mm -hmm. Now, your shoulders should be parallel to the flight line, but your right shoulder is lower than your left shoulder because your right hand is lower than your left hand, right? You feel more balance and more weight on the left leg than the right. You see, when you reach down with your right hand, when you bend the right knee and you, you flex your right hip, you, you do a little, this is a forward press action with the hip, convexing of the left hip, you're concaving of the right hip. To okay. accommodate the right hand going underneath the yes, left. Yes, so that, have a measurement. Now at this position here, you could take one hand off and hit it with a hand that you have the club on. Now you take that and you can go through there. That measurement corresponds to the left of the ball. This one from the right shoulder to the ball. And it works out professionally perfect, you see. And if, you, if you're in your stance and you want to check your position, yes. you know, where you were, if you took your right hand off the club, it should work down the yeah. basic flight line. Yeah, and yes, if, it, if it dropped into you, yes. you would be, of course, too far from it. Right. And if you moved too far f that way, it would go that way. Yeah. So a good measuring, I mean, basically we're just taking the, the body and yeah. it's just creating these initial measurements. Yes for balance points. See, the balance of the, of the rump to the head when you do the flexion to make the stance is very important. Yeah, because that doesn't that make, that makes the weight of the body it, balance into the rump yeah. as opposed to the knees. Yeah, you, that, you have no chance to hit anything consistent because you have to, have to control the flex of the knees. But when you have no flex in them to start with, except that right, but your, the height of your head is controlled by the knee that's extended. And then, now that's flex, so your right side. whole right side will be lower. And it has to be lower to go through the hitting area. Mm -hmm. Understand? But if you flex both knees, your head would drop. Well, you stick it in the ground. You hit, hit the ball after you hit the ground. You don't do that, you see. Mm -hmm. Now, 